Hi, my name is Nitin. Happy to be here. This is my home, except that I can't recognize roads anymore. I left about 30 years back, but it's always good to be home. And thanks for Kalari Capital and K-Start for the invite. I'm happy to be here. But it's interesting. I'm about 75 years old. I do yoga, I do Ayurveda, and this amazing Italy summer that's in this place. That keeps me young. Uh, but that's meant to be a joke, by the way. Right. But how many of you are health professionals here? Just three. How many of you are tech professionals? How many of you are health tech professionals? So you're wondering, with my experience in terms of financial tech, majority of the work that I have done in the past seven, eight years of my life is in, in, in financial, in fintech. And blockchain has a lot of momentum in fintech, you know, fintech. But we are looking at now fintech, health tech, and reg tech as three sort of converging points where technology has a role to play. So in this sort of session, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the work that me and my team, I have a global team of 60 people. And predominantly the work has been done across the globe, of course, but we're trying to address the elements of the challenges that we're seeing in the financial world. Health tech, which is the third largest industry that's growing from the investment perspective, from the impact to society perspective, as well as what's happening in the emerging or the, the growing economies. So I want to shed light on that work. It's real, right? And I, I want to shed some of the work that my team has done. I'm actively working now with CDC and some of the payer pay network in the United States for us to be able to understand as to what is the impact of financial technology in health tech and eventually the impact of the reg tech because healthcare is a highly regulated industry because it touches each one of us, right? So from that perspective, I do want to be able to talk about the landscape. So my first part of the presentation, which by the way, I have 400 slides and I have 30 minutes, so I'll speak really fast. I'm just joking, I only have 10 slides. But there's a history of why I speak fast because when I moved as a student from, from India to US, the calling rate was one dollar a minute. So I really, you, you can, you, we, yeah, we're dating ourselves, right? So it's, it's interesting because I had to really speak fast, just words per minute, to communicate with my family so I had to spend less money. And times have changed so much that now it's practically free. Impact of technology on our lives, right? And I see this on a daily basis in terms of what we can do to improve tech. So I want to paint that landscape for you in, the first part, I'll talk about health tech landscape. What is it? And then eventually, I want to be able to um, discuss the hardest part of my job as director of Blockchain Lab is, is to keep up. To keep up with, with various regulation, to keep up with technology, to keep up with how do we apply technology meaningfully in the healthcare world. So I'm going to, before I go into a short video, which I stole to tell a story in terms of what are the challenges that we're facing today and how are we dealing with those challenges, I do want to talk a few about what is health tech landscape in general. So historically, health, care, health tech or healthcare has been a very fragmented industry. We go to a doctor, we have a one-to-one -one relationship, and God forbid if you were to move your state or go to a different doctor, you have to start all over again. So that is the patient care and healthcare delivery mechanism. We had issues in terms of your, your trials, in terms of drug trials. Uh, the provenance of the uh, drug safety as we talk about as to how these drugs are manufactured. And each one of us, while we belong to the same species, we react differently to, diff to different things. We have different issues. So it's very hard to generalize a certain set of conditions to a specific individual. So how do we take this notion of understanding and sort of having a three-pronged approach, which is patient, the primary benefactor of all that we are doing, which is all of us here, the healthcare providers, which is doctor, physicians, nurses, radiologists, and so on and so forth. And then you have the third spectrum, which is the healthcare community itself, which is the ecosystem, which is your insurance, your payer pay networks. At the end of the day, for us to take this fragmented ecosystem, which is relying upon one-to-one -one relationship, it's important for us to be able to say, how do we defragment this and bring them on the same network? And which, by the way, if we were, to, me, living in the United States, I generate in my lifetime, or I'm expected to generate in my lifetime, about 1,100 terabytes worth of data. So this data is pointless till we are able to make meaningful sense of it as I traverse my life through that ecosystem. And that's just one, one of me. So we're talking about billion fit in India. And, uh, you know, Vani, you talked about the, the healthcare system in, the, in India. I think ours was messy right in the US, right, in terms of the fact that it is so expensive, it is so broken, and it's a trillion dollar problem globally, uh, I think, in terms of how the fragmented information is done. So health tech 
is aiming to remove disintermediation. So you'll find a lot of insurance companies, a lot of payer pay networks, and figuring out as to how do we take this friction that each one of us face, whether it's healthcare delivery, healthcare, you know, you as a recipient of healthcare information, the healthcare information ecosystem, the healthcare, uh, you know, ecosystem that's, that's there, health tech is aiming to ensure as to how do we address the elements of this data, make sense of it. So it's data acquisition, data collection, data organization, insights, and with all this stuff, the objective is only one, which is better decision-making capability. Better decision-making, which is customized to every individual. How do we achieve that, right? And it's interesting because as an individual now, each one of us have a participative role in that ecosystem. We all have, so I'm walking here because every step counts, right? It's given me an awareness that sitting is the new, not that you can get up now, but sitting is the new smoking. Right? How do we, so as, a, as an individual, we're participating, we are, we're being more conscious in what we eat and how we work, but that participation has to be linked up to our healthcare information that's out in the ecosystem and, and we have to protect it. Right? I think you mentioned this morning that healthcare information is more expensive than your credit card information because it has grave imp implications, not just on your well-being, but also imp implications on the research that's done on your data. So we then begin to talk about consent management can you then monetize that consent based on the ecosystem that aspires to use your information to give you more services, right? So in the next 30 minutes, if you're a patient, or which we all are at some point, I want you to understand what it means to you as an individual. If you're an entrepreneur, I want you to understand what are the opportunities. And you know there are a billion fit and there are a billion opportunities that come from it. And as a healthcare professional, you realize there are amazing, enormous business model that's going to emerge from this health tech ecosystem that we are building, right? And you see similarities in fintech as well. Fintech, we're trying to displace every aspect of banking, and I come to India a lot just for that fintech elements of it. We start seeing a lot of parallels and similarities between fintech and health tech from that perspective, right? Let me take a pause here. I'm going to show you a short video. It's about two minutes. And the idea of the video is, again, it's not, it's not my video. I stole this from YouTube only to make a point, tell a story in terms of what are we dealing with as a society that's inching towards adopt, adopting, consuming, and benefiting from technology and the new challenges, the new issues, the new healthcare issues that we see from the technology that we consume on a daily basis. It's marvelous to see how tremendous advance has been made in the form of super batteries, wearable tattoos, smart shoes, smart watches, and the list goes on. Do you remember writing essays on this topic of science, Buno Bain, back in school? This video is a tad bit like that one. The number of inventions are growing, so are the diseases. You might not want to watch this video if you are tech savvy and health conscious at the same time. Digital Dementia Disruption of cognitive abilities, awareness, perception, memory and judgment due to overuse of smartphones and computers. Text Neck Pain in the neck due to spending too much time on the screens of smartphones. Compulsive Communicating Extreme urge to respond to emails, social networks, etc. as quickly as possible could turn into a serious mental illness. CBR Computer Vision Syndrome Staring continuously at the laptop, TV, computer screens for long periods can cause blurred vision. Carpal Tunnel Syndrome Wrong positioning of hands, wrists and fingers on keyboard and mouse damages the median nerve. But you get the point, right? Is the whole issue is that, and, and, and the message from this slide or this video is, the, can we convert the venom into the antidote? Can we take technology which has caused the, and this is just the, and I've never heard of these terms by the way, I, carpal tunnel is fairly common, but the pain in the neck or whatever the term they used was an interesting one. These are new issues that we have encountered because we have changed that lifestyle. Right, and I think you rightly pointed out, we're in the land of our Veda Yoga. We know all these secrets, and yet, as a part of how we live our life, changes the way our health is affected, right? So in many cases, you realize that if technology is the cause of all the ailments and all the issues that we've seen, can we apply the tech effectively to be able to make an impact on our life, right? So in many cases, these are some of the challenges, and I think 
there's more to this than some of the numbers or some of the text here. It was supposed to be in black. But the whole idea is that these are some of the limitations that we are seeing that it's about data. It's about data collection. It's about patient engagement. It's about research. It's about how do we protect this information that resides with us and it, we, we have full control over this information that, that goes with it. Transition of care, care management in general. How do we ensure the doctors have, and I'm gonna use a few terms in this presentation. It's by no shameless mean to promote IBM, but some of the work that we have done from Watson Health perspective to introduce cognitive. It's just the ability for us to be able to ensure that we have artificial intelligence to amplify the human experience. Human experience from us as patients and human experience for the doctors who are providing the care to us. Right? So these are the challenges that we see in the entire healthcare ecosystem, whether you're accepting a care or you're going towards research, you're going over trials and so on and so forth. It's all about the data which has to be linked meaningfully and we have to ensure that we are applying the right tech. I think that the wording is messed up on this one in terms of it's all white, it's supposed to be black. But the idea is that the, the slide is supposed to show cognitive elements of the part that we are supposed to collect information, we're supposed to better understand information and the idea, and which is also important, you, how many of you have heard of cognitive and AI used on a daily basis, especially the tech? And I had done my master's in artificial intelligence. You realize that it's not just about some random algorithm that you apply and say, let me you know, have the data calculated. The point is, it has to learn. The system that we, that, that we design for us to collect information, organize information, research information, and learn from that, it has to have a cognitive path, which means that if we aspire to connect this healthcare ecosystem, if we, if we aspire to ensure that you as a patient has the consent to share the information with multiple ecosystem and you benefit from it, how do we make sense of this information by applying the right algorithms and have a feedback loop that yes, this drug didn't work on you or you worked out too much this week and that's why you're having this issue even though it's a healthier lifestyle but you overdone it. Right, the diet that, so how do we take, make sense of this sort of very fluid and ephemeral information that's coming into the system and provide better care, better delivery to the end, end, end patient. And so we begin to use the notion of cognitive or artificial intelligence in terms of taking this superfluous data that's coming into the system, analyzing it, and keeping you connected, which means, yes, we have mobile devices, and that's a common example that we give in healthcare, that, look, it's an app, and you can do all these things with the app, but that is just an information dissemination mechanism. It's a, it's a mechanism that collects your information then feeds into the same system. So how do we create a system that is connected and how do we secure and protect the data? That's the challenge that I want to talk about, right? So going forward, um, in this case, it is meant to amplify human experience. So humans are good at a few things. We have instincts. Uh, we have dilemmas. We have morals. We have compassions. You don't expect a machine to deliver those things. But machines are good at scale in which you're able to then have fine patterns find natural language and analyze this stuff and be able to have sources of information from multivariate sources, amalgamate that experience and then let the human decide. So in many cases, the context of cognitive or artificial intelligence that we talk about is really meant to amplify the human experience and not meant to demean it, right? So I want you to understand those pieces of it is, is especially in financial crimes world, which is all about cybersecurity, 45% of all cybersecurity incidents today, whether financial services or healthcare services, are detected, 55% go undetected. In this day and age when we have all the access to compute power. So keep that in mind as you're designing a system that it has to affect all of us in the room who are patients as well, right? Um, I'm sorry about the coloring, it is not meant to be this. Uh, it meant to be black in color. But why blockchain? And this is what my role is. Uh, how many of you heard of blockchain? Oh wow, okay, good. But if you look at blockchain, the context is always Bitcoins, right? That's the context that you, you see. But blockchain is more than that. So if you divorce the cryptocurrency from the system, we are trying to define a system which has multiple participants. You have the ability to control data. You have the ability to control provenance of the data. Imagine if I go to five doctors or I go to my vision specialist, I go to my, my um, uh, pharmacist, all the data is linked. If I'm going to, for, for clinical trials, all the data is linked, it's immutable, nobody can change it. Some of these properties at a technical level that we talk about has a profound impact on the way we deliver technology and the way we deliver healthcare to our clients where it's no longer you can manipulate the data to have better drug results so you can have a drug supply. And I really want to know about this thyroid. I have a thyroid issue and I should take thyroid, uh, levothyroxine and I, somebody had given me this 
the term that you use, the medicine in India. I, I really want to know more about that at some point. But the whole thing is that you can, you can no longer manipulate the data for the corporate sort of benefit, but you can now are accountable in the system of the network that we're creating with blockchain to be able to ensure that you have immutability, you have provenance, you have a trust built in the system. At the same time, you have consent of the data. And that's what we're trying to do with blockchain, is creating this network of trust, which allows you for the information where we're looking at accessibility, accountability, transparency. And if you think about it, transparency and privacy don't go hand in hand, right? You can't be transparent and still maintain privacy. So blockchain gives you the capability now from a technical standpoint to ensure that your actions on the blockchain network are well controlled, the access is defined, transparency is there for the entities who need to be transparent and you're incentivized for it. So if you have healthcare and you need better, and if a doctor or a established one meant one access to your condition, you have to be incentivized, which means the cost of your case should go down because you have something to give back, which is data. On the downside of it, if the data is compromised, then your health, your, your delivery, your overall care is compromised as well. And the data can be sold and bartered for a number of reasons. So we are trying to ensure that we have provenance control security built into it. And the example that I give to most people, and this is an opportune moment because we had all these ransomware accesses or ransomware issues in the past few, few weeks. The way we address this in financial services or banks is the ability for us to say, you're able to penetrate the entire seven, eight layers of security that we have come across the past 30 years that we have evolved and developed. You penetrate that whole layer to come to a ledger and change the ledger or change a record. With blockchain, we want to make sure that any change that goes through that network or the last layer of the ledger also has to go through multiple layers of approval before you commit that information to your permanent record. And that's where I think blockchain adds another layer of security to deal with cyber threats around this. Um, this is again meant to be more words here, but the whole issue around some of the healthcare uses we have seen is consent management, payer pay network, which is how do we handle payments. Uh, the insurance companies oftentimes, which is maybe a joke to you all sometimes, but they end up paying twice, which is a big no-no in, in, in insurance world, is how do we prevent some of those elements. Provenance and traceability going towards your overall longitudinal set of data, which is how, how is your data linked, how I maintain who enters and who's able to access your records and who's able to update your healthcare records. And then clinical trial results is again an important part, which is again is a multi-billion dollar industry in general, in which all the results are manipulated at times only to get the desired end results as opposed to going through what, what is scientifically proven at many different levels. So again, the intent of blockchain and healthcare world is to create that network, the trusted network of multiple participants, ensuring that each participant is registered, is permissioned, and each participant has a, has a responsibility to your record. And as these, each participant is handling or dealing with the records, we have a provenance or, or record on this part, leading to the trusted mechanism because we understand if anybody misses the data, they can be penalized, right? And it's all about the network at, at some point. So with that thought, and I think I'm running short on time, is looking at data-driven health analysis, it's all about data. It's who generates the data. It's who's able to manage the data. And at the end of the day, it's about analysis insights. So we as patients and the ecosystem that includes the healthcare professionals who deliver quality have better decision-making capability and how do we protect that information around it? That's the crux of what I want you to understand from this. And as an entrepreneur, look at the ecosystem. Look at the ecosystem as to where you want to play, what's your competency, because I, believe me, and if you were to go look closer into it, there's an opportunity in each of these areas, which is laden with paper processes, which is laden with cost, which is laden with intermediaries who are making money as, you know, taking advantage of the system, and there's no need for it today, especially in this day and age when we have enough technology to prove it. As a medical professional, you should focus on how do you enter the ecosystem, how do you create new business models, because in many cases, the existing business model may not exist. You may, be, you may have a Kodak moment, literally. Right, and as the other ecosystem, which is the insurance companies, I think it, it's time they look at, again, evolving and changing the new business model and treating your record as something that belongs to you, which you can be incentivized. So there's a whole lot of money to be made in this space. We simply have to understand what's our place in that ecosystem. With that, I want to thank you for your time and attention.